Enable notifications by ringing the bell. A Dead Meat with Friday the 13th, A New Beginning. It almost reminds me of the time that Nate embarrassed us in our new neighborhood. <laughs> hey, look. I, I forgot the door was open. Okay, <laughs> so we just moved in May. He was wearing pants. I want to make sure that everybody knows that from the beginning. He was wearing pants. We just Shorts, moved in May. And a shirt. And the door is <laughs> the front door is open for whatever reason. Because I was trying because I was trying to get Kyra to leave. Kyra was trying to yeah. leave. No, Kyra was trying to leave. You were sitting there just no, talking. She kept him. she kept talking to me. <laughs> she kept talking to me. Anyway, <laughs> to get her to leave. So they're to at the be fair, you talked st- to me for two extra hours. Yeah, they're I know. at the bottom of our <laughs> stairwells between the stairs and the door. So they're I'm, standing inside of the door. I'm upstairs streaming while all this is happening, and I'm in my room, and they're talking. And for some reason, like they okay. Got- <laughs> let me fill in the context on this. We were talking about how miraculous it was in some way, some shape or form, that I was still alive to be a part of this channel. And I was just like, well, I guess you can thank God for that. Or hate God for that. Or thank the devil. Oh my God. The devil is alive! And he starts screaming the devil's no, no, alive and I throws his arms up. It. I didn't scream it like... I was just like, the devil is alive! Like, like most, like... Neighbor's taking out the trash and looks at him. Looks straight at we me. We live in a good here Christian here neighborhood. I with, here I am with my hands up in the sky, and all of a sudden, my neighbor just, like, turns around and goes back, and I'm just like... There's Shut probably, the door. And at this point, there's probably neighbors right outside this wall right now, too, that are hearing Satan is alive from an area like that goddamn Satan worshippers over so, there. So, at this point, this is a good I hear <laughs> from the streaming office, which is not an in, which is not an insubstantial distance. No. I hear... It was mainly me laughing. Nate and no, we Kyra were both dying. dying. We were dying laughing, quite literally. And I'm like... They come up and I tell can see the I'm I like, will, oh, I will go to the stream that it happened during, and I will put put a timestamp. Thank you to where it happens. Thank you. Uh, so I, I'm like, I'm gonna do that right now. Chat, give me a minute, and I, I leave. I don't go on break. I walk out and go. What the fuck are you doing? If you're gonna laugh that hard, come up and do it on stream. So they told <laughs> the story on stream, and I'm listening from my room, and you hear me go. No, you didn't. Yeah. Because our landlord is a pastor. <laughs> yeah. And our neighbors know him. And I'm just like, no. No, they call him every time they don't that something's happening here that they don't like. Case in point, oh, we didn't mow our lawn until like one like for an extra day. And immediately, oh. immediately, our neighbors just like it was just I'm like. I'm waiting for them to tell oh. me to stop parking my car in the road. Um, oh yeah, that. I'm oh, I was, I was wondering about that with me. I was like, yeah. are they gonna hate? Are they, are they gonna hate? They can deal. They'll I mean, deal with it. Who cares? But, but I was horrified when I heard the story because I was just like, oh no, this is gonna be so bad. But they haven't said anything. No, nothing so, so far. Oh, I doubt they I would. They're probably scared. Too. So maybe that's why I haven't heard anything from the landlord. Maybe it's just, maybe they're all scared now. They're just and, like, oh, God, don't be done. See, here's the thing, though. Our landlord would think that's hilarious. Oh, he would. He would. He'd get I... a kick out of that. Anyway, <laughs> we're going to watch this video now, now that we've rambled on for however long. Uh, and because it's, you about know, five Jimmy. minutes. Not bad. It's, this is Not what we, worst. This is what we do. Yes. If you haven't figured that out by now, I'm sorry. This is how you're having to find video out. Video starts now. Video starts at... Mm, 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 mm. Thanks, Caleb. Welcome to the Kill Count, where we tally up the victims in all our favorite horror movies. I'm James A. Janice, and today we're looking at Friday the 13th. I just added the timestamp. <laughs> Good. I, heard, I never Love realized Friday how the 13th his eyebrows. That's right, the last body from the final chapter yep. was even cold before Paramount decided to cash in on some more Jason Voorhees and bring the series back from his claim that. Problem was, they definitely killed Jason. No, I'm not going to be watching anything but his eyebrows the whole time. Yep. Come back that. So they decided to try a new direction with this one. Not in terms of content, really. It's still naked teenagers getting brutally murdered. But they left Jason dead in an attempt to kick off having new villains in the series. Really should have learned from the third Halloween movie that you just don't mess with a horror series like that. But perhaps correctly anticipating a backlash through the lack of Jason, they definitely upped the body continuity in this one. So let's take a trip to the Looney Bar and get down to the kills. 
first pair of kills is right off the bat when some stupid kids and some stupid hats hit up old Worm Eyes. That's my new nickname for Jason. I think it's really gonna stick. He thanks them with his machete. First he impales Neil in the stomach, though his name is never said in the movie, but the internet knows all. Then Jason stabs Les right in the neck with a screwdriver. Why was Jason yeah, so this is the last one I saw. Who the fuck knows? Watching from the woods is Corey Feldman, and Jason actually looks pretty damn creepy as he stalks towards Tommy, who screams and then wakes up and is a hot guy! That's right, those first two kills were just a dream, but on this series, I'll probably count imaginary kills. Or maybe not. I don't know. It doesn't matter, guys. Please, don't leave comments yelling at me. But yeah, yeah Tommy's yeah. growing up. Though right? they've already left comments yelling at you, buddy. We well, you know how it is. What's wrong with the people there? I, I can't really tell, except one dude has a stutter, I guess. But that guy also makes a lot of sense. You don't set a place for a dead person. Good call, guy. The farm's run by Matthew Letter, who totally has a bromance with the sheriff, and his assistant Pam Roberts, a pretty lady who gets creeped on by Billy the van driver. Anytime, doll. Dude also looks at porno mags on the job because literally everyone in these movies, especially this one, is driven entirely by sex. Tommy meets Reckless Reggie, whose dialogue consists entirely of things old white guys imagine black kids say on the street. Man, you are one scared cat. Yo, man! We gotta split. Catch you later this action. And we meet all the other eventual victims, including oh, no. neighbors, Reggie's grandpa George, and all the insane asylum kids who just happen to all be attractive teenagers. All except Joey, I guess, the guy who loves chocolate even at the expense of clean sheets. Joey also gets surprise <laughs> axe in the fucking back by this dude Vic. Vic could probably take Jason too. Shit, look at that guy. Instead he gets pissed at Joey for being annoying and chops both his chocolate bar and his spine in half, giving us the third kill of the film. This gets wow. Vic arrested, disappointing those of us who wanted a Vic versus Jason finale. That would be awesome. Joey Joey's body is tended to by a couple of paramedics. You okay there, buddy? Your average ass yeah, in just... Movies. Bunch of pussies. The other is Roy Burns, yeah, who acts right totally there, normal sorry. and not suspicious at all as he stares into a fade out. We then meet perhaps the most <laughs> inconsequential characters I've ever seen in these films. A pair of greasers having car trouble. Greaser douche dudes. There, other than to die, but they definitely do that. Then he gets a road flare in the mouth while he's fixing the car. <coughs> so we ever wonder if people can make these Excuse jack-o'-lanterns too. Save a pumpkin. Use a greaser. Then Pete comes back. <laughs> wow. Happy. Don't say it, Heather. Funny. Funny. Come on now. Come on, everybody. Say something. Come on, motherfucker. Fix the fucking car. It looks like he's fucking the car. <laughs> Go, dude. He then gets his mm -hmm. That was actually what I was thinking. I think that guy had a wildly <laughs> successful freestyle career ahead of him. The cops find their bodies and Roy Well, he said the F word enough times to be considered a freestyle rapper. What the hell's going on here? You talking to me, Sheriff? Huh? I thought you were talking to me. Smooth. Next, we find out just how hot Tommy is. I, I wasn't lying. And Jesus, look at those abs. My God, that man had a family. Check in here, check in there. And now we're being this chick at the diner who's introduced... Swear by time. God, that man will never walk again. Never, never, never walk again. Gratuity. Gratuitous nonsense. Gratuity. Up in the woods, creeping on naked teens, then turns around and gets stabbed in the stomach with a knife. Along with the greasers, this guy has to be one of the most tangential characters ever. He's just there to be a statistic. And then, of course, there's yep. the naked teens he was spying on, and they're like really naked. The girl Tina just has these really long voyeuristic shots of her lying there naked by herself. It's only a little sleazy until you find out that director Danny Steinman started his career making porn. Then it's really sleazy. Her death is cool, though. The killer stabs her in the face with some guarded shears and then slams it shut. It's done off screen, but we see her right afterward when Eddie finds her body. That is one gruesome sight. Get it? There's some sight. She doesn't have eyes anymore. God damn it. Hey, James, come on. Explicitly had to go wash up in the middle of forest sex. Comes back to find her dead and gets his head crushed by a bell. Oh, yeah. This one. Definitely one of the most unique kills in the series. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Memorable all around, really. Ooh. Yeah. Sam and Tommy take the truck to go see Reggie's brother, Demon, so there can be another character. Oh, look, he has a girlfriend. I didn't know there was a two-for-one deal going on. After Reggie leaves, Demon gets hit by some enchiladas. Damn enchilada! And runs to the outhouse. <laughs> 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 I forgot about that. That's weird. <laughs> That's weird. Hey, come on, man. Sometimes, sometimes. Demon finds Nina with her throat slit and her pulse oddly active for a dead person. Just look at it go. Just 
falls in the way. Then Demon himself gets impaled with a spike through the siding of the outhouse and takes a good long oh. while relishing in his death scene. Hey, it's your big moment, Demon. Might as well milk it for all it's worth. Meanwhile, the angry redneck neighbors... Damn, Juana Man just got fucked up. Out and beat up Junior. Not only with some solid punches, but also a fucking leg drop. Look at that. I got Junior rides his dirt bike... Fuck! Go! ...several times in anger before getting decapitated by a cleaver. I won't say that table... Swear by God, that, that man... That table had a family. That man's broken in half. <laughs> Good job, New Beginning. You cleared a very low bar. Then Ethel gets a cleaver in the face through the window, causing her, in turn, to kill the tomato she's holding. Reminds me of the banana snuff murder in the final chapter. These guys love oh, to kill no. the I don't want to talk about that. People like Ethel. Hell of a character. I'm sure she'll make a hell of a stew. Now we're an hour into the movie, and Jake, the stuttering guy, gathers up his courage and comes on to Redhead Robin. I want to make love with you. She responds to him in the way every guy loves to hear. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Another cleaver to the face. Discovers it in her bed. As you wound up there anyway, right, Jake? <laughs> God. <laughs> but he's dead, so. God damn it. Robin herself is the next to go, but only after getting naked and wandering around topless, because again, sleazy porn director. She's killed with the by now very familiar stab through the bottom of the bed treatment. This marks yeah. the third time they've done this kill in just five movies, and not have matched the awesomeness of the original with Kevin Bacon. Oh, yeah, there's also this alternative chick, Violet, who's actually a really sweet break dancer. And we know this because we watch her dance for an uncomfortably long time. She gets killed too, slammed up against the wall and stabbed in the gut with a machete. I'm noticing that despite the high body count, a lot of the action occurs off screen or in lame looking clothes. Hey, at least she wasn't naked. Here we arrive at the final true, true. Running the course this time, ladies and gentlemen. That's right, Pam Roberts. Let's see how she does when she's up against the fake Jason Voorhees. Pam checks all the boxes. She makes sure the young kid is safe. She runs around in the rain in a white shirt. She finds bodies of all the victims. Thing is, usually those bodies are people we've already seen killed. But this time, they use the opportunity to add new corpses to the count. First, she finds that douchey paramedic with his throat slit. He'll be forgiven if you didn't recognize him. Dude was barely in the movie, and finding his body here really has no impact. I mean, aside from giving us this wonderful scream from Reggie. Then she nearly runs into Matthew Letter, who's been pinned to the tree with a knife through his head. Looks like you just got that's a railroad spike. That's a railroad spike. Finally, she has a corpse thrown at her through the window, a final girl circuit staple, and sees that it's Reggie's grandpa George. Looks like oh, no. Man. What you doing with those eyeballs, Roy? Collected eyeballs for some reason? That's weird. Pam circuit comes to a head, as many of these do, in a barn. Not a very original finish, Pam, but there is something to be said for being traditional. She fights Jason with a chainsaw, which is pretty freaking sweet, and Reggie screams from the rafters until Tommy shows up to save the day. How's he do? Not great, Bob. He gets his ass kicked way faster than you'd expect. Remember this Not great, Bob. Instead, he's down and out, leaving Reggie and Pam to fight the killer on their own. Reggie does a flying tackle that knocks the killer out of the barn window, and before he can take them down with him, Tommy resurfaces and cuts off his arm with a machete. The Jason wannabe then falls down onto some farm spikes, which is yep. their technical name, and his mask peels off, revealing that he's... Holy shit, it's Roy Burns? No way! Wow! What a totally unexpected yet satisfying twist to this movie! The wrap-up comes from Matthew Letter's bro, the sheriff, explaining everything to Pam. Apparently, Roy was Joey's dad and snapped when he saw his son's body. He then modeled his skills after Jason because... Well, because really, they need another Friday the 13th movie. Speaking yeah. of which, this one ends with yet another fake death when Pam goes to check on Tommy in his hospital bed. He roids out and pulls a machete out of nowhere and sticks her in the gut with it, making Pam the final kill in this movie. Only not really, because this is a Friday film, so we should have known this was all just a stupid fucking dream. Tommy wakes up from it and sees a vision of Jason in his hospital room. The real Jason, not Roy Burns, knows the red marks on the mask. Then he gets all creepy and the movie ends with him maybe actually killing Pam? Or maybe he was just gonna fix her some lunch. Whatever. This thing's finally over. Let's do the numbers on this sleazy, dirty, nasty film. It's, uh... Mm. Yeah. There were 22 deaths in Friday the 13th in the New Beginning, although not all were from Jason Imitator Roy Burns. Two were from Jason Imitator <laughs> One was from Scary Vic, and Dream Pam was killed by Dream Pam. Like Dream when he looked a little like Gender down is 15 yep. guys, 7 girls, much more balanced than the previous four films. And with a runtime of 90 minutes, that's a kill every 4 minutes on average. Damn. 
the golden chain saw for all those kills gotta go to Eddie. That's nice. Still feel like yep. Be a little bit more gory, yep. like all the kills in this movie, but it still feels really painful watching Roy Burns twist that stick around and tighten that belt. Just ignore the fact that he twists around two different directions. It, it, it's yeah, that's, that's one thing I noticed too. Yep. Tough, but I'm gonna give it to Violet because look at that stab. That is seriously a pillow they're stabbing right there. Tom Sabine yeah. is rolling in the grave he made from scratch. And look, and never and that's right. you can actually see beginning. that there's the blood the has already mm -hmm. traveled through. Yep. That the killer they spent all that time watching was just some asshole named Roy Burns. For part six, they made it clear that Mr. Voorhees would return, and we'll look at that next week. Till then, I'm James A. Janice. This has been The Kill Count. Hey guys, thanks a lot for watching Kill Count for Friday the 13th, The New Beginning. I know most people hate it, but I kind of appreciate how just downright nasty it is. Younger I mean, it gets to a point where actually you gotta be like, damn, I need a shower. Not, not many films make me feel that way, but I need a shower. I mean, lamest kill, in some ways, I definitely don't agree with that being the, the lamest kill. What's the lamest kill in your mind? Oh, I think it it has to be one of the ones where the it was just blatant nudity. Because uh, that's just... Well, say one like, thing there about was the no point say to one that. thing about the blatant nudity. The kills in that aspect at least had... A form of a more form of originality to it, like the, the garden eyes. shears and the eyes. Okay, that one, the yeah, that one's fine. And then the other one, the Can't other really one, call that about, adult the one at the bottom of the bed. I could see that one being the dullest kill too, because they've done that that's, three times. See, that's already. the one that I would lean towards. Yeah. yeah, and and you see, I would I would agree with you with that. It's just the the practical effects on that were actually pretty good, yeah. whereas the practical effects that we got with. Breakdancing girl yeah. was absolutely terrible. You could see the blood coming through the shirt already, yeah. and you could and you could tell that that wasn't meat that was being stabbed into. It was pure cloth. You could tell that it wasn't an actual thing. Which I I I think this is one of the Friday the Thirteenth films that Tom Savini did not work on, and you can tell because the practical effects in this are not as good. Now the makeup yeah. effects are okay. Like like the straight up makeup makeup effects that you see, like the eyes, the sheared eyes, and everything like that. Yeah. Some of that's good, but the actual like kills, like seeing the kills taking place, like the for instance the Kevin Bacon one where he gets stabbed through the neck in the first one, mm -hmm. still to me is just like mm, skin crawling. Do me a favor. What? Roll it back to where we were like that's a railroad spike. Uh, it's all right. Oh, Let's see. Uh, later, 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 yeah. later, later, later. Yeah. Keep going. Later. We're almost Duke. there. And then, there it is. Okay, yeah. Because see, the thing is, I could see where he would make that mistake. That's definitely a railroad spike. That is, because, yeah, well, no. I've seen railroad spikes made into knives. Yeah. I actually I actually know someone who made one, and I mean, it's really good. It's like, I, I, I look at it, I'm like, okay. You know, like on first glance, yeah, okay. <laughs> what uh, what's the name of that one gun in uh, Fallout? The railway rifle. Yeah, yeah. It's like it's like wow, <laughs> toot toot, motherfucker, <laughs> <laughs> No, no. Actually, I remember impaling. Uh, toot funny toot, enough, motherfucker. <laughs> well, funny enough, I remember doing that to like a super mutant boss. Uh -huh. Like he was like talking nothing but mad shit, and then I railroad spiked him in the head. His head came flying off. And his head stuck to the wall behind him. That's that's one of the things that has stuck. I loved it. No pun intended. From the <laughs> the railway rifle since three, because in three you could uh, take body parts off and pin them to walls. Nice. Yeah. That's like the old school. Like one of my favorite things about Half Life Two was the fact that you could stick. Yeah, the yeah, the crossbow. The yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, and also, yeah. also, and also, the... not only that, but the, uh, <laughs> but also, uh, the gravity gun. Whenever you shot a saw blade at somebody, and oh like, yeah, half, the saw blade would like the saw yeah. blade would like stick in the walls and all that. So love that uh, for for reference because I don't know if you've played Half Life Two. The crossbow, the, the crossbow. crossbow. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Haven't had enough caffeine today. Crossbow bolts are like just superheated rebar. It's superheated iron rebar. Yeah. <laughs> so it's basically a rail gun. The thing is stupid and can't possibly work, but it's one of the greatest weapons in that game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's, real satisfying. it's so stupid. <laughs> but it's so good. Oh, How many man. times have you said that today? Okay, here's the thing. And I figured this out. Things that are awesome... 
Like they're just unbelievably cool. Also typically really stupid. Yeah. Agreed. So for example, the shovel launcher, the shovel launcher <laughs> in far cry five. That is the dumbest idea I've ever heard. And <laughs> it's, it's, so it's unbelievably cool. cool. It's awesome. Um, one of like the what stereo. About the junk, what about the uh, junk launcher? Uh, what's it called? Uh, the uh, the rock it launcher. Rock it launch. Yeah, it's yeah. Like literally, you pretty much put junk. Like, in Like you it. can just launch teddy bears at people. Yeah. And yeah. Kill them. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, there's the the strike out. <laughs> and then there's a strike out where you the launch a the striker. Ball. Yeah, where it's a modified fat man that launches bowling balls. <laughs> um, that's badass, actually. Yeah, but see, like. Also, the monster mm. truck. Monster trucks, a lot of people say, are one of the coolest things ever. The idea of a monster truck is real dumb. Mm-hmm. But you see, it's it's that level of gratuitousness. Gratuity. Is yeah, it the truck that's thing. dumb, or is it the fact that they take a vehicle and specifically modify it to be able to smush other vehicles? That, Either me, way, it's is it the action of cool. swooshing the other vehicles? I dumb? think it's like, I think it's the fact that it can do it things that other vehicles can't do. Because honestly, original monster trucking events were were mudding events, meaning they would soup these trucks up, they put tractor tires on them instead of like regular conventional big tires, and they would have them go through this mud bog that if they made it to the end, they won, and. Uh, and what they would do is they would, like, throw in hazards that would make it more difficult. Like, they'd throw in rocks here and there, or, like, build up little mounds that they'd have to climb up and all that. And more and more, it just became, like, eventually Let's... somebody threw a car. Somebody had to have thrown a car in and, and then they went, oh. And it's just like, wait a second, all that broken glass and all that crushed metal. That's awesome. Let's do that in an open field with a big old fucking truck. Can Nate. I have a monster truck? No. Uh, <laughs> Nate, you're... I'm hoping you'll remember the name of this because it's it's completely left me. The giant robotic dinosaur that they use to crush cars. Oh, uh, uh, the name Carzilla? No, the name has left me. Let me let me actually Google that but real quick. That is the prime example because somebody built a giant robot dinosaur specifically to crush cars. I love them. That is <laughs> so wasteful, and yet Great. the most badass thing ever. Robosaurus. Ro yeah. Robosaurus. I remember Robosaurus. Um, actually, I remember uh, they were talking about having Robosaurus go up against like two monster trucks, like Gravedigger and uh, Maximum Destruction. <laughs> <laughs> See? Now, think about how dumb that is. Yeah. But think about how awesome that is at the same time. Oh, yeah. And me, I'm like, I'm like, I'm all aboard with this. See? It's like, could you imagine, like, like him holding up Grave Digger and blowing fire into it and like setting the chassis on fire? Uh, God, like, of course, us. they talked about like doing remote controlling the cars. You know, yeah, getting remote control uh, servos for the steering wheels and the gas and the brake. But uh, I'd love to see that. I'd love to see car like actual fucking car wrestling. Like, because that's, like, next level stuff. Because I've seen Robot Wars. You all remember Robot Wars I remember and, like, Robot Battle Wars. Bots and stuff like that. Like, they had Sir Killalot in there who had, like, a huge shield that he'd bring down and, like, smash you. And then he'd have a drill spear that he'd, like, drill right into the middle of it, right in the middle of your robot, and destroy it. Like, holy crap. Absolutely I love ridiculous. That stuff. And, and awesome. And also they had See? Matilda, Sergeant Bash. They had a bunch of... Sar Sergeant Bash I like a lot because he had a huge spike that would come down and like like pin mm. you down and then he'd just blow a flamethrower he blow his flamethrower into your chassis and just melt all the internals. I just thought of one more example for your stupid but awesome. Nate Nate's, Nate's just making my case over yeah. here. Riding suplexing a metal gear. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> yes! And that, in the That's like first the epitome of that level. Like, observation. In the first yeah. Level. You see how the ridiculous first Raiden is. Mid boss. You you see is just how Raiden ridiculous Raiden suplexing is. Suplexing a Metal Gear. <laughs> That's ridiculous. What? Amazing. I love it. I love it. Not to mention like the sprint down the clock tower vertically. And oh stuff. my god, it's so R dumb. Like, jumping across the missiles. It's, it's all dumb, but it's also badass. It's so dumb, but it's 
it's, amazing. It's pure riding. What do you want? Yeah. Of nature. <laughs> yeah, and then the lyrics kick in. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> so yeah, there there you go. That's mm. that's my theory for today. <laughs> uh, but that's just a theory. I'm sorry. I don't think you're allowed to say that. That's pretty pretty copyrighted. (laughs) Yeah. Is this theory really dumb? You be the judge. No. No. I wonder how many questions Matt Pat gets where it's just like, uh, is Mario a racist? No. No. Okay. And that's just, that's the video. (laughs) That's this new thing me and Ben have been doing. It's great. It's, yeah, it's uh, real good. Like, here's one. Here's one. Is Castlevania a secret allegory that vampires are real? No. no. Yeah. We'll continue this next time. Until next time, I'm Nate. He's Ben. That's Heather. That's Kyra. That's Nick. We are the Renegades. We'll see you later, everyone. Good night. I didn't think he was going to be able to keep that voice up. That's weird. I didn't either.